All right, Bonjourno, you already know what it is. It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, New Year's Eve. Time to, you know, close the chapter. And what a year it has been for this platform. Huh? I met a good friend, shattered mob stories. Took on a world of its own. Now we're popping. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Yo, why my numbers keep going up? You know what I mean? But anyway, salute to everybody on this New Year's Eve. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're not working, getting ready to party or whatever it is you got to do. For me, it's just another day. There's money on the streets. Time to collect. But before I conduct business, we need to talk a little bit, right? Allow me to light up some of this uh, Skywalker OG Kush, courtesy of the Splash Brothers. Hold on. Let me know what you're smoking on this New Year's Eve. I want to know. I'm all in your business. Delicious. My boy Shattered found a great, great fucking article, man. Oh, man. It's been a busy decade for the Canadians, eh? So salute to uh, Montreal Paul Michael S., Michael S., I got your email. Thank you, man. Happy New Year and, uh, 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 you know, happy holidays to you and those that you hold dearest, my friend. Great article. Mob Story Season 2. Big things going on next year. I already told you 420 report coming through. We will start the 420 report on January 6th, that Monday, all right? Oh, it gives me time to break down the episodes because. You know, it's the 420 report. We got to keep it real. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have it on this platform, so we can't play no music. That That's the only thing. We got to keep it clean, you know, as far as uh, the requirements for monetization, because that's where we're going next year, right? All right, so let's get right down to business. This article was written by uh, Monique Biodin of the Montreal Gazette. A decade of deadly mob instability, hell's arrest, and corruption. The past decade has not been easy for organized crime groups in Montreal. There has been deadly instability in the Montreal Mafia. The Hells Angels were arrested and a provincial inquiry showed how organized crime had infiltrated Quebec's construction industry. Here is a brief timeline of the biggest news events since 2010 that involved crime in Montreal. And there's going to be some banners playing, all right? Courtesy of uh, Shattered, of course. Paolo Renda, brother-in-law of former Montreal mob boss Vito Rizzuto, is kidnapped. This is 2010. He has not been seen since. Nicola Rizzuto Sr., Vito Rizzuto's father, is shot and killed by a sniper hiding in the woods behind his Carterville mansion. The murder remains unsolved. A rash of firebombings of Montreal businesses is tied to an ongoing mafia war over drug trafficking, says the police. 2011, the trials begin for 51 Hells Angels accused of conspiracy for murders committed during the 1998-2002 biker war between the Hells and rival drug gangs in Montreal. They were among 111 full patch Hells Angels arrested in 2009 in a police investigation called Operation Shark. Shots are fired. Of course, this is 2011 now. Shots are fired at Reynald Desjardins, a close ally of Vito Rizzuto. At the time, police believed Desjardins and another man, Salvatore Montagna, were trying to take over the leadership of the Montreal Mafia before, because Vito Rizzuto was in a U.S. jail on racketeering charges. Montagna, the former head of the New York City's Bonanno crime family, was shot and killed later in the year. Quebec creates an anti-corruption police squad. A report on corruption in Quebec by former Montreal police chief warns of the involvement of organized crime in political financing and public construction contracts. 2012, Chenier Dupuy, leader of the Bogar street gang, is gunned down in his car because police believe he refused to join a gang led by Gregory Woolley, a street gang leader with close ties to former Hells Angel leader Maurice Mambochore and Vito Rizzuto. Vito Rizzuto is released from a jail in Colorado. Again, this is 2012. 
Joe DiMarlo, a former Vito Rizzuto confidant who was among those who tried to take control of the Montreal Mafia while Rizzuto was in jail, is shot and killed four days before the anniversary of the killing of Niccolo Rizzuto Sr. The Charbonnet Commission, a public inquiry into corruption, begins public hearings. The commission heard of a system of corruption of public construction contracts in Quebec organized crime had a hand in which companies won contracts and how much they were charged and had corrupted government officials. During the inquiry, police surveillance videos were broadcast showing construction bosses meeting with leaders of the Montreal Mafia. A video of Nicola Rizzuto Sr. taking stacks of cash and stuffing it into his socks was also shown. That's the old school. I remember you used to put your little stack in these socks. I did. 2013, 27 Hells Angels pled guilty cons to conspiracy to commit murder during the Quebec Biker War. Moreno Gallo, an associate of the Rizzuto organization whose loyalty was questioned while Vito Rizzuto was in jail, is shot and killed in Ac Ac Acapulco, Mexico on the third anniversary of the shooting death of Nicola Rizzuto Sr. Giuseppe DeVito who smuggled drugs into Canada through Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport in cooperation with the Rizzuto organization, dies in jail. DeVito's wife, Adele Sorella, had been convicted of murdering their two daughters. Vito Rizzuto dies of natural causes at Montreal Hospital. That's 2013. 2014, former Montreal police officer, former Montreal police officer Benoit Roberge, who investigated criminal biker gangs, is sentenced to 80 years in jail for selling police information to the Hells Angels. RCMP arrests 32 people linked to the Montreal Mafia is an investigation called Project Clemenza. Police monitored more than 1 million BlackBerry messages exchanged by those arrested. The group faced charges in connections with fire bombings, attempted arson, kidnapping, assault, extortion, and gangsterism. Street gang leader Ducarme Joseph is shot and killed in Montreal's St. Michael neighborhood. Police later said Vito Rizzuto suspected Joseph in the 2009 murder of his son Nick Rizzuto Jr. and had planned to avenge his death. That was 2014. 2015. 15 more Hell Angels plead guilty to conspiracy to commit murder during Quebec's biker war. Police arrest 48 people in an investigation that they said showed the mafia. Hell's Angels and street gangs in Montreal were working together to control drug trafficking. It's nothing like criminals working together, right? It doesn't... It, it, it may not last, but sometimes it does. But, uh... Pretty interesting when three different groups can get together for a common cause. The cause is, of course, business. Among those arrested were Vito Rizzuto's son, Leonardo Rizzuto, and Stefano Solicito. Police alleged that they were the heads of Italian organized crime in Montreal. Solito's father, Rocco, was a close associate of Vito Rizzuto. Street gang leader Gregory Woolley was also arrested, and police alleged that he was the cornerstone of organized crime in Montreal. Also arrested was Loris Cavalier, a defense lawyer who was friends with Vito Rizzuto. In the same investigation, police said Maurice Mambochure, the former head of the Hells Angels in Montreal, who was in jail for ordering the deaths of three prison guards, conspired to kill Reynald Desjardins, formerly Vito Rizzuto's right-hand man. The Charbonnet Commission final report is released, finding a widespread and deeply rooted system of corruption in Quebec's construction industry. Okay, that's 2015. 2016, Lorenzo Giordano, a Rizzuto organization underboss who acted as one of the mafia leaders while Vito Rizzuto was in jail, dies after being shot while sitting in his car outside a gym in Laval. Rocco Solicito, a longtime Rizzuto associate and one of those who led the organization while Vito Rizzuto was in jail, is also shot and killed in Laval by a man who waited for him in a bus shelter. Reynald Desjardins is sentenced to 14 years in jail for his part in a conspiracy to kill Salvatore Montagna. 
A judge abruptly ends a murder trial for five Hells Angels freeing the five bikers. He ruled that the Crown had withheld key evidence from the defense in the case. The men had been charged in connection with murders committed during the Quebec's biker wars. 2017, lawyer Loris Cavalier pleads guilty to gangsterism and weapons possession and is sentenced to 34 months in jail. In a statement of facts read in court, Cavalier was described as a bridge between organized crime groups who held meetings with gangsters at his St. Laurent Boulevard law office. An investigation by Montreal's Inspector General finds that towing companies are responsible for removing damaged cars after accidents are mostly run or backed by organized crime groups like the Hells Angels and Mafia. They control their territories through intimidation, beating, and by setting competitors' trucks on fire. Shane Maloney, an alleged leader of the West End Gang, is sentenced to 10 years in jail for trying to buy 25 kilograms of cocaine from a police undercover agent. 2018. A Quebec court judge drops charges of gangsterism and conspiracy to traffic cocaine against Leonardo Rizzuto and Stefano Solicito. The judge said the police illegally wiretapped them in the conference room of their lawyer's office. Former West End gang leader Alan the Weasel Ross dies in a Florida jail. Ross was sentenced to life in 1992 for operating an international drug trafficking network. Francesco Del Balso, an underboss in the Rizzuto crime organization who was arrested in 2006 in a vast anti-mafia police investigation, is arrested and charged with threatening a Montreal television reporter. Gregory Woolley pleads guilty to drug trafficking and is sentenced to eight years in jail. Maurice Beauchamp is sentenced to 10 years for conspiracy to kill Reynald Desjardins. That ends 2018. 2019. Construction entrepreneur Tony Maggi, who was business partners with Nick Rizzuto Jr. and worked on a development in Old Montreal with Vito Rizzuto, is shot and killed in Notre Dame de Grace. Seventeen people are charged after police in Montreal and Toronto shut down an international money laundering ring. They said handle cash from Montreal crime groups. The network using connections in Lebanon and the UAE, Iran, the United States and China to launder money before returning it to drug exporting countries such as Colombia and Mexico. A judge acquits Leonardo Rizzuto of gun and drug charges that were laid against him in 2015. The judge ruled that the evidence in the case was obtained illegally. It was from the Project Mega investigation where police had bugged lawyer Lori, Loris Cavalier's office where Rizzuto, also a lawyer, worked that's fucking balls right to go in up into a lawyer's office where you where by right you know your right to speak to your lawyer whatever you say to your lawyers but you know it's like client you know client privilege right and these fuckers went in there and <laughs> bugged it anyway Police say at least 17 murders in the Montreal region in 2019 are related to organized crime anybody see fat Pat Musitano Detroit Siggy was popping they include the they include the murders of brothers Andre and Salvatore Scopa, who were both involved in the Montreal Mafia. Salvatore Scopa was killed in May when two men burst into the Sheraton Hotel in Laval, where Scopa was attending a family party. Andrew Scopa was killed as he walked into a gym in Pierrefonds in October. Police said in November that they would work together to investigate crimes related to the underworld as the number of shootings and killing increased. I'm surprised that fucking Musitano family didn't make it to the goddamn uh, article. Uh, what's going on here, uh, Monique? Fat Pat Musitano was damn nearly assassinated, survived, and disappeared. Anybody see Fat Pat Musitano? Anyway, listen, salute to you guys. I hope you like the article. You got to salute my man right here. Hold on. Let me throw his name up on the screen right here. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Let me light some of this OG Kush, man. I mean OG Kush. I mean Skywalker, Skywalker OG. And just because it's the end of the year, that don't mean you don't wipe your feet on the rugs. You know what I'm saying? Follow the rules. All right? Mob Story Season 2. You know how we do. New Year's Eve. Everybody have a blast. I hope you guys have a great, great new year. 
blessed and chosen, as I like to say. Big things are gone. You know what I mean? Make sure you like the video. Comment on the video. All right. Make sure you throw some smoke in the air. Right? Bless the atmosphere. Let me know what you guys are smoking on for New Year's Eve. Like the video. Like, like, like the video. The more you like the video, the more we trend. The more we trend, the more people come. The more people come, the bigger we grow. The bigger we grow, the more noise we make. The more noise we make, the more people hear us. The more people hear us, and they know. Ruckus Radio Podcast. Mob Stories. Team Ruckus. You already know how we do. Happy New Year to all you guys. All right? Salute.